As Director of Archive and Dialogue at the Nelson Mandela Foundation, he was Mandela's archivist from 2004 to 2013. Widely published, he is best known for leading the editorial team on the best-selling Conversations with Myself by Nelson Mandela. Now in New Zealand to share Mandela's presidential years with a new book, Dare Not Linger. Please welcome to the cafe, Fern Harris. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. It's an absolute honour and a privilege. Now, before we start, please can you explain to me what an archivist actually does? I mean, obviously you deal with files of uh, archives, but what was your job there at the foundation? Basically generating a record of the life and times of Nelson Mandela and making that record available as widely as possible. And with the foundation, what was the actual purpose of that? You know, the foundation was set up by him as his post-presidential office to support the many projects that he was passionate about. But uh, he gave us a new mandate in 2007 to do memory and dialogue work. And when you say memory and dialogue work, what does that really mean? What that means is uh, we need in South Africa to find a way of reckoning with our past, the colonial and apartheid past, but uh, the instrument to effect change is dialogue. In other words, get people who don't actually want to see each other to enter a space and listen to one another in order to find sustainable solutions. And I'm guessing working with Mandela, he was known for writing screens and screens of notes at mm. every meeting. So was that quite a privilege? Was it quite an honor? Was it easier than most because there was a lot of archive there? It was quite intimidating, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't want to uh, make him angry. No. Uh, no, 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 not a nice experience. Uh, but um, uh, he had a great sense of humor and uh, you know, he was very engaged in the work that we were doing. So, you know, it was a privilege, but also quite scary. All right, let's talk, talk a bit more about the man. Yeah. Okay, Mandela, this, this name it evokes so much emotion from so many people. I have my recollections of, of him, you know, being incarcerated. He was there for almost three decades. Yeah. But what, what actually put him in prison in the first place? Well, he was found guilty of sabotage. So there was an armed struggle um, against the apartheid regime. And he was, he was incarcerated with many people at, the, at that time that then ended up in government with him. Is that right? Yeah, a whole generation. Uh, although the generation was fairly old, when he came out of prison, he was 71. Uh, and so it was a, a, a combination of that older generation. That's why he was only president for one term. What was that X factor you think that, that he had that brought people together, that listened to him? You know, he, uh, my sense is that he had a very powerful... Um, capacity to tell a story, uh, a compelling story, and then to live it. And if we look at the new book, which is absolutely stunning, by the way, not Thank only you. does it have um, incredible words from Nelson himself in there, um, Dare Not Linger, um, how did this come together? Well, he started writing a book, a memoir, a reflection on his presidency. Uh, he never finished, so, you know, he, had, he was in his 80s running out of steam. And uh, this book is an attempt to complete the project for him, a gift to him. In terms of his presidential time, okay, it was, it was five years. Mm. It just it give us an example of what it was actually like in South Africa when he came to power. Well, our economy was on the brink of complete collapse. We'd been through uh, essentially a civil war uh, and uh, the, the fabric of society was completely unraveled. And his task in those five years was to uh, make democracy stick and create a platform for continuing work. In those years, which are detailed in the book, obviously, mm. what do you think he managed to achieve? Well, he made mistakes and uh, he uh, was the first to acknowledge that. Um, but he also put in place, uh, I would argue, most importantly, institutions uh, for democracy building. Uh, and the, the key then when he stepped down was would we be able to keep growing those institutions? And he was worried about that, wasn't he? About stepping down and what would happen after he stepped down? Yeah, he wanted Cyril Ramaphosa to succeed him, but uh, you know, he went with the collective uh, decision of, of his party. And so he was concerned about uh, the, the succession. During those presidential times, I mean, you, you're talking of a man, he, he, he was ailing, he was, he was older, he was in his 80s, yeah. that's right? Yeah. Um, and so is that the reason why you only managed 10 chapters of, of this book? Well, it was more than that, you know, he had a fetish around record keeping and a uh, fetish around pens, so he'd always have two pens in his pocket, a fountain pen and a ballpoint pen, and 
uh, the writing process was then very painstaking. So he would draft something, uh, it would be typed up, comments would be given, and then he would sit down with a piece of paper and start writing from scratch. Must have been a bit tough to add it. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a, a real challenge. But, uh, you know, we've got a great author, Mantla Langa, uh, who was within ANC Structures but has an independent voice, Gr great novelist, actually, and yeah. so he's told, a, I think, a compelling story. And how do you think he did that? I mean, he obviously had to complete those years. So, so was that made up of, you know, reports of what happened, where he'd visited, and, and other people's memoirs? We did a lot of interviews. Uh, and the interesting thing is that people are willing to talk now in a way that they weren't 20 years ago. Uh, so there's a richer layering. And, uh, you know, there's some very fascinating uh, accounts of things that didn't work so well, people who weren't very successful uh, as cabinet members uh, as leaders in government and so on. All right, one thing that really didn't work so well that, that Mandela actually put his hand up for, what would you say that was that's in the book? Yeah, um, he, uh, there, there are quite a few actually. Yeah. Um, but the one that I've, I think is really interesting, he talks about gender and the role of women in leadership mm -hmm. and he confesses to having had uh, um, uh, still a bias uh, as to whether women could really be successful in the workplace. And it was the powerful woman who worked around him who finally convinced him that this was a, a, a problem that he had to deal with. Because Winnie, um, his ex-wife, was actually wanting to go into the deputy leadership role, was it? Yeah, she was in the running to, to uh, become deputy president, yeah, and, and president, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, didn't happen. Well, he had dismissed her as, mm. a, as a deputy cabinet minister. Yeah, um, congratulations on the book. Thank you so much for coming Great in. My pleasure. Um, and on, on the work that you're going to continue to do. I Thank know. you. Dare not linger. The Presidential Years is out now and available from all good bookstores. Wow, what an incredible guy. Yeah. And what amazing work too. I know, and interesting that you didn't want to scare him, you know, get upset with mm. him, because he's quite yeah. scary when he's angry. Thank you very much, Holly.